Happy Wednesday night. Welcome to Deep in the Plus. I'm your host, Rob Whiteside. Thank you guys, as always, for being with us. We appreciate you. Business out of the way. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel, WDWNT-TV, and also give us a thumbs up as it's cheap, free, helps people to find us. And tonight we have with us the one, the only, Stephanie. How are you? Hey, doing well. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for being on. Uh, we've suckered you. I mean, convinced you, talked you into <laughs> doing Deep in the Plus. I know that new, normally you do Park Center with us and you have like 100 kids. And so I appreciate that you take your time uh, to come do this and talk to us about stuff. We've we've talked about Mary Poppins Returns, Robin Hood, and right. and those because you had, you had a tie to those uh, when you worked for Disney. But you you have uh, an interest in baseball and tomorrow is opening day and you're like let's do uh let's do a baseball movie and i was like okay yeah what do you what do you have in mind and you said rookie of the year and i went ah oh, perfect it's brought in from 20th century fox it'll be great and then like i kind of came knocking and was like oh by the way 3 days ago um it's not on disney <laughs> not plus <laughs> does it drive you crazy how many yeah. things aren't off on disney plus it it does me it does, absolutely, especially when it was there prior and then they take it off and I'm looking for it. Why do you why do you take it off to put Era's tour up there? Okay. Whoa. Well, we don't <laughs> <laughs> we we don't smack talk Miss uh, Miss Swift. We don't do that. Um but uh but you you picked another movie and I was just like, "Okay. Um I this 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 brought me like I w I pitched to you the idea of Big because I thought Oh, you know what? She might like Big. That's a movie that most people like. And you're like, have you done the X-Men? Yes. And I was just like, what? And so we're talking about the 2000, the original X-Men, Brian Singer X-Men movie uh, from uh, 20th Century Fox. Again, back when 20th Century Fox owned uh, the rights to this and then got sold to Disney uh, You know, when they bought the deal. And now it's back in their hands, but they haven't really done much with it. Um, but I think maybe it was top of mind for you. What, actually, let me just ask you, why why X-Men? Um, well, number one, because I was going down the list and I didn't see any movies that you've done prior <laughs> that have an X to them. So there was that. But also because I am a, a, a fan. I am a fan. I, full disclosure, I, I'm going to tell you straight off the top, I did not read the comics growing up. So some of my backstory and history and um, ideas of what character development was like is probably off a little bit because what my love of X-Men has come from, my passion about it, has come from the um, original animated series. So much so, yes, there you go. So much so that I did, and it was either high school or college, I tracked down somebody who had taped it off of television and put it illegally <laughs> onto DVDs. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, no. <laughs> Not our favorite Mary Poppins want to be bootlegging no, videos. No, That's of horrible. Not bootleg. <laughs> um, well, I mean, and this is kind of in 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 conversation these days because uh, just last week they dropped X Men ninety seven, and right. for those of you who don't know why it's X Men ninety seven, like why would you do this? Is the original series that she's talking about went from nineteen ninety two to nineteen ninety six with five seasons, so it's almost as if this X Men ninety seven is picking up where the original series left off. So that's why X Men ninety seven. Um, I haven't jumped into it yet, so if you have, no spoilers. But do you like it so far, X Men ninety seven? I actually have not begun to watch it. Because <laughs> so. you've been no too spoilers. busy watching X Men. Like, you know, the real deal, the X-Men, the uh, Hugh Grant, I mean, Hugh Grant, the Hugh Jackman uh, and uh, Halle Berry and uh, Sir Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart. I, <clears throat> I, we talked about one movie in this series and there's been, there was X-Men, there was X2, there was the, the Last Stand, which was the third one. And then they came out with First Class and, uh, but there were some Wolverine movies and there was X-Men Origins. Wolverine that Patrick and I talked about a long time ago and nobody likes that movie I don't think do you like that movie <laughs> um I would say it's okay I I prefer I really do prefer this one I do the X-Men 2000 yeah well so the I there the reason I bring that one up is that as we talk about this movie there are some things that don't jive 
between right. X-Men Origins Wolverine and the X-Men movie. So I'm probably going to bring that up. I apologize in advance. One of the things that we talked about at that time was that to me this brought characters or this was like the first, I feel like, big superhero movie in the Marvel world where they went all yes. out. Uh, the, before the MCU and all that kind of stuff. And they it looks like and it feels like they brought these characters into the real world that this could actually happen. Did that – do you think that like – that was a good thing that we didn't see them running around in their comic book outfits or were you disappointed? Okay. So the fangirl in me was a little bit disappointed that I didn't get to see Hugh Jackman and some spandex. Okay. <laughs> or James Marsden, either one, <laughs> but, but I will say that's the beauty of X-Men in general is that it is about biological evolution and mm -hmm. mutation and it could yeah. potentially happen. It's not that you got radiated from some, ship in the atmosphere and you know can't, well some of them did but you know what i mean like that wasn't like it's not like bruce banner and and the hulk and everything so it's a little bit more like maybe it could really happen some years down the future so bring it into the world, real world i think is a good idea well and, and the costumes are kind of that way too is that there's a there's a line famously in this one where uh ex, where they're in their suits and it's just like leather black leather suits with like x's on them and very yeah. understated, kind of. Uh, and uh, Wolverine says, "You guys actually go out in public with these." And uh, and Cyclops goes, "Well, what did what would you prefer? Yellow spandex, which uh, <laughs> obviously a throw to uh, mm -hmm. to, to Wolverine, which we're actually going to see in the new. And we'll talk about the Deadpool movie at the end here, but the new Deadpool okay. movie that comes out this year with uh, with Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. So that's going to be exciting too." Um, so anyway, the first time I saw this movie, I loved it. Um, I, you know, I went to the theater to see it. I loved the idea of bringing these characters to life. I knew the comics a little bit. I was more into Avengers comics than I was into X Men comics because there's so many characters. I was a little bit lost actually, trying to dive into that. Unless you were there from the beginning, there's X Factor and X Force and Cable and and it, and it just it's like whose parent is who and uh, yes. and they changed it a little bit for the movie and it gets a little complicated. New Mutants. Right. Um, but I, I really enjoyed this movie. Uh, I know that we were talking pre-show and you said Rogue was your favorite. Um, yes. were, were there any of your favorites missing from this first X-Men movie? Let me put it that way. Um, people, Jubilee obviously had played a, ro a huge role in the cartoon series. So I would have liked to have seen her. She comes in later, but, um, Kitty Pride. I know that one of my roommates in college was really like just mad that they didn't have her in the original movie here, but I do think that they do a good job of adding on and X-Men first class is, is a great movie in its own right. So I think that they've done a, a good job of kind of expanding that world. I was, um, disappointed and we can get into this later, but, um, how they did not have of the X-Men Avengers crossover because there's multiple opportunities and the two stars, the two, uh, you know, people that they base this movie around are Wolverine and Rogue. And they are the two people, the two characters that really could bring in and pull in the Avengers at any point. They really could. So I hope that they do. Okay. Well, and again, this is going to be a new slate for, for Marvel now that they have it back in house and they can do stuff with it up until this point. Uh, you know, again, Brian Singer and, and, and 20th Century Fox were doing their own thing with it, and, and we'll list off in a little bit what the other movies were. But when you were saying Jubilee, this is Jubilee, right, in this movie? She's sitting here yes. next so to it. But, they, I mean, she doesn't do anything. Correct. Yeah, they kind of give, like, little nods, and you can kind of see, like, cameos, but they don't – she doesn't say anything, <laughs> at least yeah. in this one. <laughs> But again, it's that's actually to me that's a smart thing because there's too many. You know, the, you, mm -hmm. I think it, like, did you watch um, the Eternals? I did not actually. Okay, so in the Eternals, they like introduce like nine new characters to people who don't know them, and so then you've got to like learn a little bit about each of them. And I think that that's maybe too much. I see that in a lot of the old like. Um, like the old Batman movies when Batman Returns came out. When when Batman came out in 1989, it was Batman and Joker. Right. We're done. Mm -hmm. When they came out with Batman Returns, they're like, oh, well, we got to have the Penguin and Penguin. we got to have Catwoman. We can't just have right. one. And then the next one, there's like a whole – it's just too much. So I think that <laughs> – I think they try to make it bigger and better when they do this. But in this one, I like that they didn't introduce us to too many 
uh, in this first yeah. one because again they start to roll them out later. But that, but but my question was which one would you have liked to have seen? And you went with Jubilee, which again it she's there but she's not. So um, that's that's a good one for me. Uh, like Colossus is the one that I wanted to see oh, yeah. here that we don't actually see until until the next movies. Um, honestly, this movie is t so set up for sequels mm -hmm. <laughs> when yes. they're going through it. I mean, there's so many things with Eric, and we'll, we'll get to how it ends, but there's so many things that are set up with sequels um, as it's going along. So when, when this movie first came out, like I said, I, I was eating up anything that was superhero uh, because it wasn't a big thing. Now we're at the point where there's so many superhero movies. I still watch them. I still go to see mm -hmm. Blue Beetle and whatever else D DC's going to okay. throw out. But um, yeah, I'm a dork. It it, it does like that happens. Um, but 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 now the 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 Fox and uh, you know they had Fantastic Four and they had uh, X Men. Mm -hmm. Those were like two huge um, franchises. And we've never done a review of the Fantastic Four because I've never found somebody who would do one with me. Huh. So seeing how this goes, maybe you'll come back around. Okay. And, and we'll talk about that one later. But honestly, I, I think those were two great franchises to have. Um, and 20th Century Fox had them, uh, and now again, now Disney Disney owns them. So there you go, full circle. Um, but when you go into Disney Plus and you pull this up, like here's here's the list. Like there's a ton mm -hmm. of movies here, uh, and most of them again came off of um, off of this X Men movie. But I don't see Days of Future Past, which is one mm. that merges the first class with this right. this genre so mm -hmm. um anybody who's going to go in, into this and start watching these i would say you start with the x-men movie and and move forward um but a lot of people also still get confused with the fact that it's got the marvel name on it but it's not part of the mcu so we're we're, we're bridging that gap with deadpool but yeah right yeah i don't know why they they decided to i mean deadpool is obviously very popular maybe that's the route that they go and hugh jackman has really taken over wolverine and, and made it his own i mean he i think this is one of his first major films in the u.s even and you can tell how young he is when when you watch this movie but he really was a standout and i think that that's a great thing i just wish that they would have incorporated different character arcs um, for instance, when Wolverine in the comics, correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, but doesn't Hulk go into Canada and then the military releases Wolverine to be able to counteract him and, and try to take him down. And that's how the two meet. Weapon X. Weapon X. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and honestly... Again, like a lot of that stuff changes over time too because they right. reintroduce characters they've been out for so long. Speaking of being out for so long, this movie came out in 2000. That's t almost 24 <laughs> years old. Did it yes. shock you when you were like, yeah, let's do that movie? Does it seem like it was just yesterday? I mean, it does to me, but that just tells you how old I am. <laughs> so. What? When this movie came out, where did you see it? Did you see it in the theater or did you see it later on? 100% in the theater. I was there like buying my tickets early, yeah. <laughs> Get that popcorn. Uh, right. It's a great cast. I mean, it's, it is a great mm -hmm. cast. And I was looking in the chat, and Jay Ware said uh, that um, uh, something, uh, the casting was pretty good. So uh, I, 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 I say think it was almost one. impeccable. I really do, except for, and this is my problem, is that I loved Rogue, and I really wanted to see her as the adult version. However, upon my rewatching it this time, right before this, I kind of understand why they wrote it the way they did. And it was... Um, there's one plot hole, and it's a big, pretty big major one that I want to talk about, about that. Okay. But making her a 17-year-old, it kind of shifted things, right? Like, she was part of the X-Men before Wolverine got into the X-Men. So I was, I was struggling with that the first time I watched it, but now I kind of understand why they did that. Well, <laughs> so there's a thing. You, you, you were talking about Rogue and being 17. Um, there's a thing in the... Um, in the setup for this, uh, like a, like an explanation, which I put in this uh, on this YouTube video, where it's it 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 sets this movie up as quote they are children of the Adam home uh, Homo Superior, the next link in the evolutionary chain. Each one was born with a unique genetic mutation, manifested in extraordinary powers in a world filled with hate and prejudice uh, and feared by others. I left out the words because they put this in the original. It says that they're manifested in puberty. Because, again, yeah. 
that that's kind of like I think they why they put her here so we could see her evolution into this and why she had like was seventeen and kissing a boy and all that. Yes, and that does make sense for her character. However, certain certain ones were born with their powers. I mean, you think about Beast, and you think about um, actually Wolverine. He was born with his healing powers initially. You know, he was born in like 1897 or something, and that's why he's so old. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I think that kind of trying to explain it in that way as your body's going through a stress anyway, going through the changes, and then you have these mutations that it get expressed biologically that that could happen okay so when the movie first opens up it's it's charles and he's given a speech and then we run into i i don't think they set it up with any text or anything but we run into what we assume is the holocaust and it's eric as a young boy and and so i think that there's a comparison they're making here obviously between the holocaust and this mutant registration act right right yeah they actually do um quote it it's poland 1944 so they do put okay. a date to it mm -hmm. i looked away then <laughs> I, know. <laughs> but, <laughs> I know but it does explain his backstory it does explain why he would hate humans in the human race so so vehemently and it, i mean it makes sense so here's a problem that i have uh and, and again but let me, let, me, let, me, let me back up. So, so again, they're comparing the Holocaust, and, and, it, and it kind of is what Eric's motivation is for why he hates right. so much this Mutant Registration Act. But also there's kind of a parallel between puberty that they're trying to make here and, and becoming something else, right? Like mm -hmm. this is where you emerge and become the thing that you're going to be. So I feel like they kind of like – there's like double meaning in some of this stuff. And mm -hmm. I think that maybe in being double meaning, it gets lost. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know that um, the the puberty angle is really uh, elevated apart from her speaking about it in the in the assembly there. Um, and, you know, some of the kids that you're seeing whenever you see a full swath of them from the school, they're all in mm -hmm. that teenage years. So right. that maybe it kind of plays into that. But like I say, some of them are born the way that they are just out of the, you know, out of the womb. And then some of them are due express later. Okay. So here's the other thing that bothered me a little bit. And maybe you could talk me off the ledge on this one is 1944. <laughs> when we see young Magneto, he's actually somewhere, I'm guessing between like eight and 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, we see that the guards are holding him back from his mom. The gates have been shut. He reaches his hand up as if he knows this is his power, and he pulls at the fence, and it starts to buckle. And for some reason, this one guard's like, oh, I know how to fix this. Let me just knock him out, and this won't this won't be a thing anymore. And he's like, no fear. Just he's like, this is the weirdest thing that has ever happened in the world. And this one guard's mm -hmm. like, just, just knock him out. He's going to – we're going to fix him. But – if that's the case, let's say that he's eight years old, mm -hmm. then he would be 64 in 2000. Mm -hmm. I, he doesn't look 64 to me. So then the question, and he's not the healing one because you said that about, about right. Logan. So then yes. my question is, is this taking place in real time? Like okay, it says some. It says no because it says somewhere in the distant future or in the near future or something like that. It, when it when it moves on, it does make that kind of statement. So it's not really giving you an actual date. I will say this: why is why does Mystique not appear to age or appear to age very slowly? Because her cellular changes that because of her shape shifting abilities cause her body cells to age slower. So put in whatever scientific -y sounding sci-fi reasoning magneto's magnetic powers cause his you know his cells to age slower put that in there if you want to explain i guess it. so i don't know i because again you know we have a different thing in x-men first class because it's supposed to take place a little bit in the past and so that one i get but in this one it just seemed like mm, it's a, it seems a little bit off if we're modern day on this but uh that's just me but being nitpicky and I know that. <laughs> you can't get better than Ian McKellen. Like, he he was great as Magneto. And uh, James James Stewart, Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart. Uh, yeah, all right. So let's go back to that. So Patrick Stewart at the time was Captain Picard. 
no yes. question he was Captain Picard. And when they put him in this movie, I immediately, and again, going back to the casting, was like, yes, yes, I totally get that. As opposed to when I was a kid in 1989, Batman came out, and I was just like, Michael Keaton, Mr. Mom, is going to be Batman? <laughs> like, that doesn't make any sense to me. But this one, like most of these characters or actors I didn't know from other things, but mm -hmm. definitely Patrick Stewart I knew as Picard, and it, like that I bought him as uh, as right. Professor X. Mm -hmm. so. And um, I actually loved Halle Berry as Storm, except for, like I said, going back to the cartoon series, Storm had a much deeper, more raspy kind of voice. And so Halle Berry talk, kind of talks like this. And I really, I didn't like the two, but I like her. So I thought that she was decent. She was kind of a motherly figure, which yeah. you know, goes in, in line with that. But she also, I felt like, was trying to get the accent a little bit. But we didn't really hear bit. her talk much, so mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was a thing too. And then James Marsden, I don't think we had seen him in much up until now. Now, since then, he's been in Sonic the Hedgehog, he's been in Hop, he's been in like mm -hmm. he'll just he'll just do anything. Uh, but he, I think in, <laughs> in 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 Cyclops, I think I mean as Cyclops, I think he did a great job in kind of like sort of playing at low brow. I think now he's kind of silly in what he does, no, but I think he. In, he was a great casting for that role, for sure. Because Cyclops is the leader. He's he's the leader in the, in the field and, and kind of, you know, Professor X is number two, if you will. And I feel like he took on, he can embody that, but he was also kind of the nice guy. And that's really where you have Jean Grey's pull. Do I go with the nice guy or do I go with the bad boy? So <laughs> did you like that storyline, though? Like, I mean, were you yes. like... Okay. That's a real that's a real storyline. You had to have it. Absolutely. I just didn't know if that resonated with you more because it was the good guy and the bad boy and all Look, that kind of stuff. I'll, I don't know. I'll just say this. You put Hugh Jackman and James Marsden on my screen and I'll just watch whatever it is, okay? <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. Wow. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um yeah. So, <laughs> so let's talk about the rest of the cast. Famke Jansen, I I yes. knew her from Goldeneye, and so oh, like yeah, I yeah. had I had known I had seen her in in that role before, and I think again as Jean Grey, she's very understated, and mm -hmm. again that makes it very real world that she's not over the top. I thought she was I, a great casting for that too, and also because she's beautiful, and Jean Grey obviously she has an allure that you know, Wolverine was immediately attracted to. And that makes sense to me. Um, the one thing that they do in the future, in the later films of the, of this uh, trilogy that really irritated me is that they messed up with the Phoenix storyline and they don't really get into that in this movie. They do yeah. allude to it. They say, you know, her, she's so powerful and she hasn't learned really to control that power yet, but they don't really get into that till after the second, I believe. Yes, at the very end of the second, because she, mm -hmm. and then she, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, by the way, you didn't get the joke, because I was saying, like, it wasn't over the top, because her name was on a top in uh, the James oh. Bond movie. It was, it, it was uh, Zinnia on a top. <laughs> like, back when they would do that in a James Bond movie, basically. Yeah. Like, the, the, yeah. the weird names for the women. Uh, Ian McKellen, <laughs> so commanding in this one, so good. Um, you know, uh, Anna Paquin is rogue. You give that a thumbs up. Yeah. Thumbs I would have liked a young Scarlett Johansson. Okay. That's, that's um, like. and then Rebecca Romaine is mystique. I think that was one of those things where everybody, I mean, that was a big takeaway from this one because of like the body paint and stuff that they did to create mystique. Um, right. definitely. That was definitely a unique look for the time, and she wasn't in it a ton, and I wonder if part of it had to do with, uh, like, well, she wasn't in it as herself because she was always morphing into somebody else. Right. So, I don't remember if it was the second or third, but they do have her it, as her as herself at one point, but it is fairly brief. Yeah, I thought she was actually great as Mystique, and, and again, she doesn't have many lines, but can I add, so this is where I want to put in this plot hole thing, right? So, okay. How does Magneto know about Rogue? Because that is kind of the the through line that gets you through from the beginning of the story to the end of the story. He's trying to get Rogue because she is obviously the most powerful mutant. She can take other mutants' powers. So how does he know about her? Do you did you ever go through? Did you watch it and and ask that question? No, no. Oh gosh. There's a, 
there's a lot of things that I wonder when I'm seeing it, like when when they're reading uh, Logan's mind and he has flashbacks to being in the tank, mm -hmm. and it's like yes. all these markings on his feet and things, and I'm like, you wouldn't, he wouldn't have seen any of that. He wouldn't have seen True. it. Like whose eyes are we looking through when we see that? <laughs> um, That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. So so and the same thing with like. Uh, when uh, Professor X uses Cerebro to find the mutants and he's like mm -hmm. seeing them and he sees like Rogue's face as if there's some kind of like the Nine Eye camera from uh, the Timekeeper is like moving around <laughs> and finding them, not from inside them again. So mm -hmm. maybe that one maybe could be explained by he's seeing them through some other mutant eyes, maybe. I don't mm -hmm. know, but it's just those okay. kind of things that I, I told. Patrick this once and I say it all the time is that if you explain the rules to me of how things work and then you're consistent with it I'm fine you know yeah. Superman can fly and and here's why and here's when he can't and all that I'm good but when you when you just throw things out there I think it's like I don't and I don't think they do that as much today as they did in mm -hmm. 2000 or before so so you really had an issue with the cinematography then <laughs> give me the different angle no. All right. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm not sure. Never mind. You get what I'm saying. I um, do. You wanted to see from their perspective, because if they're in, if he's inside their mind, then they would be, he'd be seeing outside of their field of vision. He wouldn't be yeah. seeing 360 around them. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's, let's talk about how this movie gets completely screwed up by X-Men uh, Origins Wolverine because okay. I think, again, they had a great opportunity here to dive deeper into each of the characters. Had they done all of the origin movies of all of these characters, that would have been awesome. Sure. I would have loved to have seen that. Throw one out a week and I'll go see it. Um, that would be great. And I heard Gambit was supposed to be one and that would have been really cool with the New Orleans ties of Gambit and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Or Louisiana, anyway. Um, so... The, one of the problems I have with this one versus X-Men uh, Origins Wolverine is that one opens up where he and Sabretooth are brothers. And so they go yeah. off to war together, and they live through life together, and then they become like mercenaries together, and then they become villains to each other. And it's just one of those things where it's like they're brothers, and then we see him see Sabretooth in this one like Attacking he's him. just there to yeah he's he's like there's not a connection there and it just seems like if you weren't going to have it in this and you're going to have them all in the same universe that seems like a dumb thing to make him his brother growing up Right. And yeah, you would have thought that if your brother started attacking you on the icy road in Canada or whatever, the Alaska, that you would have been like, hey, what are you doing? You know, but he didn't yeah. say anything to him. Maybe that's how they get away with it because they didn't actually speak to each other. In Alberta, Canada. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and he's much more of like a like a wild guy uh, yeah, in this one, feral. too, the, sa the Sabretooth one. <laughs> I just feel like there's so many characters in the X-Men universe that if you're going to rewrite it, don't like do that. And then yeah. of course there's the 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 Deadpool ending to uh, Origins that didn't make any sense at all, which they joke about in the Deadpool movie or the second one where he's like I'm just fixing the timeline here and right. so it'll be interesting to see how they play with that uh coming into the next one, but yeah, you so could, you when could the arguably go ahead, sorry. No, arguably go ahead. What? Oh, I was going to say, arguably, you could say that this is Rogue's origin story, if you want to go that that way, because you're seeing her as the 14, 15-year-old kid, kissing her boyfriend for the first time and discovering her powers, and then how does she get to the X-Men? And this is this is my, my point in saying the plot hole from the beginning. Her actual origin story has to do with Mystique. You know, Mystique, she does do that. She does you know, kiss her boyfriend and put him into a coma. And she runs away from home at that point and lives out in the woods. And Mystique happens upon her and finds her and kind of takes her in and becomes her mother. In certain episodes later on, she describes her as being her mother. And that would have made sense had they kept that storyline in this film. Because then Rogue becomes part of the brotherhood of evil mutants, right? From With Magneto and Mystique. And then maybe she has a change of heart and then she joins the X-Men and they're trying to get her back. You know, Magneto's trying to get her back to get her, her powers for the machine at the end. It would have made, it would have been just fine and it would have held tighter to the original story. Yep. 
No, I agree. Um, when they first start this movie, and again, we, we were introduced to uh, to Eric and the Holocaust, mm-hmm. and then they go to uh, to Rogue and what she's got going on, and then they take us to the, uh, the Senate where they're having this hearing about the mutant registration, and, um, and Jean Grey is talking. I guess they put her up there because she, I don't know, looked the most normal i have no idea why uh and you know charles is is lurking in the you know up in the in the rafters and eric comes up and they have this conversation um and um and it started at that point that i realized how many times i've seen this movie because there were a lot of lines that come up in this movie uh and 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 i'm like i'm saying them before they happen on the screen it's like well uh you know what are you looking for in there charles and he's like hope and I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> like that, like that's the one of those things where I'm just like, he's he's kind of tapping his hat, uh, where I know this movie much better than I thought I did. Or are you the same way, that's or great. have you seen it a bunch of times, or not really? I've seen it a few. I've rewatched it with my kids, and of course, I rewatched it right before this episode, so I can refresh my memory. But I don't think I was quoting it. I do re- recognize some of the lines, absolutely. And I think part of it for me, too, is that whenever I go to see the sequel, I always mm-hmm. usually make my family watch, uh, and they're fighting me on Ghostbusters because Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is coming out. We're going to see it this yes. Saturday. I'm like, we got to go back and watch Afterlife, and they're like, nah. And I'm like, no, no, no. We have to we have to do that. And so we would do that with Harry Potter. We would do that with Marvel movies before they were 20-some. But now, uh, like with the X-Men movies, I would always go back to the beginning and watch. And I think that's part of the reason I know this one so very well. But um, mm-hmm. but the, the other one uh, is uh, when Logan has Rogue and he finds her in the back of his truck and he pulls her out and, and – uh, She's she's like, well, what's going to happen to me? And he goes, he goes, I don't know. And she goes, uh, you don't know or you don't care. And he says, pick one like I like that's <laughs> yeah. that's one that like sticks with me the whole time where I'm like, I know this one cold. So anyway, um, let's talk about something from a physics standpoint of Cyclops. So so Cyclops. Mm-hmm. He's when he's just mild mannered Scott walking around the, the mansion. He's just got these glasses on. <laughs> Right. And the problem I yeah, have with that, that is is that his, his visor that he has is sealed to the point mm-hmm. so that no light gets out or anything. And he's just basically rocking a pair of Ray Bans here or I, I don't <laughs> they're not Ray Bans, but it just you know, like it seems yes. like I, I get that they're like why wouldn't he just wear the visor the whole time, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, they totally should have had him in the visor, I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, any, anything else about like the, the characters that bothered you or uh, the rest of us pretty spot on like storm. I'm, I agree with you. Like Halle Berry nailed storm. Like she is storm to me forever. Like, I think that was great. Um, and then well, obviously Rogue didn't all, have her white streak until the end of the movie, but I guess they were trying to explain why she had the white streak in her hair. So, yeah. okay. I'll give it to you. And then there's that cheesy line where, where he's like touching the hair and she's like, I kind of like it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So it's like well, I think in the comic sure... she actually dyes it at some point. She dyes some of her hair white or something just because she likes it. Um so uh again as we're moving through this she goes to on this trek that she had kind of been teasing when she was talking to her boyfriend and going up north and then she runs into Logan and then decides to hang out with him. And then they get ambushed by Sabretooth and saved by Storm and uh, Cyclops and taken back to the um, uh, back to the, the mansion with Professor X where we all learn about the school and the kids and Rogue's okay and what's going here. And then they have a little bit of a look into the classroom, which I think is, is a good taste of what that's about. Um, so they're kind of explaining – all of this as we go along and then we start to dive a little bit into the weapon x stuff just a little bit like i know you don't know your history so it's almost like they had sat down and said okay wolverine's the guy like we're gonna make a oh, yeah. bunch of wolverine stuff oh yeah so. <laughs> oh yeah and actually um the the portion where rogue is coming in he's having the nightmare and she's trying to wake him up and he impales her you know <laughs> so during that um in, in, interaction and then she takes his powers and she heals herself from his, his powers his stabbing her 
actually was a nod to his um, fatal stabbing of his girlfriend Rose in the in the comics. So I think that that was pretty smart of them to add that in, even though that never happened in <laughs> the timeline otherwise. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he gets to she gets to save herself because of the whole like taking mm -hmm. his powers and all that thing. Right. That's uh, true. And so it shows her the... powers because she's more powerful than him. Yeah. Um, he said, I almost felt like I almost died. Right. And, and there was a red herring there where in the beginning, because Wolverine's the one who's attacked, everyone thinks, why does Magneto want Wolverine? Why yes. do they want Wolverine? Mm -hmm. And then there's a part before they figure out that, that he wants Rogue where where Charles even says that if he was the one that Magneto was after, and yet they still don't seem to know at that time. Right. Like, <laughs> like wait, you've just Put cast doubt on it. <laughs> yeah, what, what, if it's not him, who could it be? The other one in the yeah. truck, maybe? Maybe that's what it was. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we have, uh, we have Senator Kelly, who, you know, is, is, he's the modern day baddie, almost, and then, kind of switches over to the good guy in a way because he's the one that uh you know that is a is wanting the the he, he's he's rabble rousing in the senate of you know these people are coming after you uh they're gonna you know if if this one girl can walk through walls why can't she come into your home are we are we mm -hmm. safe we need them to register and uh that's when eric's pushing back you know when they're talking about registering and then he gets mm -hmm. kidnapped and taken and turned into a mutant. Uh, and now we feel sorry for him. We feel bad. We feel bad when he turns into jelly and then right. like, completely disappears, right? <laughs> well, <it's>, yeah. <laughs> it was one of those, like, that was one of those, like, Raiders of the Lost Ark melting faces where I'm just like, it totally oh, was. <laughs> yeah. It totally was. I, yeah, and it's just like, Ugh. and and then like Storm's holding his hand when he turns. Yes. And yeah, and the part where he's like going through the, through the bars. Oh, yes. Like, 2000. It reminded me of Roger Rabbit with the eyes coming out, bulging, you know, with the. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 yeah, it almost was a little bit, a little bit mm, icky. Uh, but when he first gets kidnapped, he gets kidnapped from, uh, from Mystique and she's sitting in this, in this chopper with him and has been playing his, um, his his assistant his the entire time mm -hmm. and the aide does such a great job to the point where i'm like oh this isn't an actor this is actually mystique being yeah. this guy like i bought into that like sh like <laughs> they did such a good job with that where she's given a where uh he's given her uh given <laughs> i'm trying to make it mystique again he's giving the senator these weird looks and just these blank stares the entire time and um mm -hmm. yeah i don't know it's uh it, it, I think they did a, a great job with that one and making you hate Senator Kelly, and mm -hmm. then they turn to the point where he's the victim, and you know they change over from there. So mm -hmm. let me stop here and say thank you to everyone who's watching. If you haven't already, give us a thumbs up. Help people to find us. You know what, Stephanie? I'm going to do something a little bit different here because I know oh, no. you said <laughs> you said before the before we started here, you said that you were uh, like all studied up for me to do <laughs> trivia, right? Mm, maybe yes. <laughs> so I feel like I'm, you know, I'm gonna follow in the footsteps of your favorite character and go just a little bit rogue here. Oh no! <laughs> did, did did you get the joke? Let's Isn't do that it. funny? I got That's it. Funny. I got that one. <laughs> That's funny. Um, all right, hold on what a second. What kind of a Let name me... is that? What kind? What kind of a name is Wolverine? <laughs> um. All right, so. Uh, let me go in here and ask you. I, I have a couple from this movie, but most of them are not from this movie. Oh, crap. So, you ready? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. When the movie opens up, and, and again, if y'all are in chat, play along. It's going to be great. Uh, Rosita's already going woohoo trivia, so here we go. Come um, on, Rosita, let's go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when it opens up, I mentioned that it, it opens with Patrick Stewart's narration of... of you know, of the movie in the beginning. What is the first word he says? He says <sighs> one word by itself and then starts going on. I would say it's mutation, but I know it's not mutation. It's mutation. What is the... It is! <laughs> yeah. Lucked into that one. Yeah. Uh... 
the the there see maybe it's just going to be too easy um when when uh the marvel movies were out mm -hmm. stan lee while he was still alive was cameos yes in just cameos. about e every marvel movie where was his cameo in this movie on the beach getting a hot dog or selling a hot dog one of the yep. two <laughs> yep so I have an interesting uh, interesting comment here is did you see there's a um, there there's Stanley right there did you selling see, the hot dog right did you see there's a Nickelodeon documentary on right now about like how the oh. how the 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 kids in Nickelodeon were treated quiet on the set yes I've quiet on this. set have you, you haven't seen it though right I haven't watched it yet. <clears throat> there was one guy in it who was uh, who was who was brought up as having been pickle a boy predator? Uh, uh, yes this mm -hmm. is him and, oh and, my and gosh I, this is him and, and I, I had to pause and stop and talk to my wife no. and I'm like wait a minute that's not that's not uh, it's him yeah oh, how crazy wow. is that like we that's we're crazy. just now talking to this talking about this thing and yeah that's him that's that's Brian Peck so it was just like wait <sighs> what and looked him up and it, and he is listed though as uh as hot dog vendor which is weird to me cuz it looks like are he He's and Stan running this stand together cuz it looks a little bit weird but yeah. yeah so anyway sorry that was i know that was random but i had to point that out because i was like wait a minute that's that's uh, a weird that's thing weird. all right toad ray park plays toad okay in this movie what famous star wars character is he known for playing as well <sighs> famous star wars character famous like really famous or famous as in you know it because yeah you know everything jay where jay where saying well this is a downer yeah sorry man i just I'd like again i couldn't unsee it i had to share it right like i just i mean i don't know this one you gotta tell me you don't know so I, i'll give you if i give you a hint that he he didn't do the voice would you know it wasn't Jar Jar Pink's was it? <laughs> oh, Darth Maul. <clears throat> yeah. So okay. Ray Park is like you know he's like a, a like a stunt combat specialist, and there's one point ah. where he 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 goes to that elevator, and he pulls a stick out, and he spins it, right? Mm -hmm. I feel that like that's sense. kind of a that's kind of a throw to, to that whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, a little bit, okay. a little bit, but that's what Ray Park is is known for, and so it's interesting that they let him be himself in this movie. Kind of, mm -hmm. I mean, he's all made up and and and, yeah. uh, and nasty, actually, pretty nasty. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> this is the first set of movies, and then they have a second set of movies, which is X Men First Class. Mm -hmm. Rebecca Romaine plays Mystique in this one. Who plays Mystique mm -hmm. in the First Class movies? Jennifer Lawrence. See, look how easy that is. <laughs> Uh, Halle Berry, who played Storm in this, mm -hmm. uh, had a had a big movie in 1992 with Eddie Murphy. Do you know the name of that movie? In 1992 with Eddie Murphy. Mm -hmm. It wasn't Beverly Hills Cop. That was in the 80s. <laughs> I, I, I I may I like I say big movie, but I may be literally the only person that ever saw this movie. Oh gosh, had, well then I don't it know. Had, it had Robin <laughs> Givens in it as well. Um, it, it it was called Boomerang, and so here she is as a young oh, actress. Oh yeah, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 I I. Go ahead. My my um Halle Berry uh you know, knowledge extends to um, the Flintstones. <laughs> That's almost about it. <laughs> Was she trying to, like, seduce Fred Flintstone in that one, I feel like? Yes. Yeah, totally. Urgh. Yikes. Not, not for real to, you know, she turns to be, she was a bad guy initially and then turns to be a good guy. But anyway. Yeah. Good movie. Uh, well, she was on A Different World uh, and then um, she was in Jungle Fever, Strictly Business, Last Boy Scout, and then Boomerang was the next one after that. So I think that was, like, okay. when she had, like, a, a big role in that one, but uh, <laughs> uh, Cat says the foot scene movie. I I don't remember what that was, but I, I do remember that um, Eartha Kitt was in it, and she would be she would say Marcus because that was his character's name, and he like I think <laughs> slept with her. 
Um, oh and, but gosh. I also remember in there, like, he was like, you know what Mr. Spock's last name was? Spike Jenkins. He was part of the Jenkins boys. I don't know why I have that in my head. <laughs> Again, I've watched it a lot. All right, you ready? All right. <laughs> Here's the last question, and I hope you get this one uh, because oh, this movie is from 2000. Okay. According according to Billboard, what was the top song of the year 2000? Oh my gosh, um, was it "Hit Me Baby One More Time," Britney Spears? No. Oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? "Breathe" from Faith Hill. Really. Mm -hmm. That's actually yeah. shocking, but okay. Yeah. Had nothing to do with anything except for I was, like I said, I was going a little rogue. <laughs> yes, you definitely on this went one, rogue. <laughs> And I was pulling some stuff because, you know what, honestly, uh, I just felt like we needed to mix it up a little bit. So hopefully you guys had fun with okay. that one. That's the end of it. And, and I think Jay Ware <laughs> said, Steph is rocking it because you did hit a Aww. bunch of those. So congratulations <laughs> on that. Ones that, that one. were X Men related, maybe. <laughs> yes. I tried. Of course. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I'm looking back through that and going, yep, that's probably the, the string that held all this together. Uh, so uh, so there's a nefarious plan where Magneto is going to turn everyone into a mutant. Um, I actually, okay, back backstory to this, my son thinks Thanos actually had a good plan um, <laughs> about taking out half, I know, super dark. Super dark. Yes, I'm just saying, yes. like, hey, we don't have enough resources. Half the mm -hmm. people were good. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly think this sort of like, I see the madness or and the method involved with this one. It's like, hey, if we make them all like us, they won't hunt us because I right. can't fix this any other way. This is the only way that I can fix this is if I make them all like us. And now he doesn't realize, obviously, and then doesn't believe them about what this will do to them. Uh, and, and I say them, I guess I mean us, because I'm not a mutant Human, that you yes. know of. Um, and so, <laughs> that, <I know> of. <laughs> that, that you know of. So when, when, when this happens, I'm almost thinking that kind of makes sense, like in a mad sort of way, because we're getting to an era around this time where we're starting to be sympathetic towards villains. We're starting to see, yeah. like, with movies like Maleficent, where you're like, okay, I see why she was angry. He cut off her wings. I see why, mm -hmm. you know, like this villain, Cruella is this way because this happened. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so, so I sort of see that a little bit, especially coming from the, the Holocaust based of where, based of where he was. But what are your thoughts mm -hmm. on that? Am I way off base on no, that? No, no, I, I completely agree with your assessment there. And, and I think that's why I really like X-Men. Cause like we said before, it's something that, maybe really could happen in the future. It's more plausible, if you will. And same thing with, um, you're talking about Michael Keaton in The Dark Knight. Don't don't hit me up on Batman now, okay? Batman's my jam. And he was a great Batman, I will say that. He wasn't the most buff like Hugh Jackman type. But if I go off on my tangent, Batman is not superhero. I mean, he's not a superpower person. So he has to learn all of his skills. And Michael Keaton, you know, obviously can do that too. But, um, but yeah, back to the X-Men, I feel like, yeah, absolutely. It makes sense. And I think it was a good um, plot line for them to be able to take something traumatic as what he experienced as a young child and kind of turn that into why he's trying to get them to, you know, understand where he's coming from at the, at the very yeah. least, but punish them at the, at the most, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I'm looking at the chat. Ronald says, yeah, sleep with your door locked, Rob. Um, <laughs> and then Nico said, oh, but we still can't stand Bonnie from Toy Story. Um, right. <laughs> I mean, maybe villain? I don't know. Uh, oh, I, no. I know that Desi thinks that, that is, uh, that's the case. Uh, Ronald also said Keaton is Batman. I don't know if you saw the Oscars thing, Stephanie, but him in the audience with um, – with Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito looking around for Batman and pointing down to him. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> and it was Pretty like, odd. yeah, that's so good. <laughs> I think they kind of did him dirty with bringing him back in, in the flash. I feel like he should have been in a bigger movie. Mm -hmm. um, but, and maybe there's still a chance for, for doing that. But I thought he like, yeah, I agree for some reason, even though I started out thinking this guy can't be Batman. 
he's Batman. But the, like the same thing with 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 Hugh Jackman. I almost can't not see him as Wolverine. We did a review oh, for yeah. our I think it was our hundredth episode of Deep in the Plus where we did a review of The Greatest Showman. And even though he has an amazing singing voice and can dance and is a great actor, man, he is Wolverine. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. And this was Wolverine was before uh, his role in Les Mis. He was robbed. He was robbed of that Oscar. Okay. Um, <laughs> so then uh, we we know the plan, and we know it's not going to work because it's going to kill everybody. And so they all suit up and they go out to to the Statue of Liberty. Which, by the way, I don't remember reading about how much damage happened to the Statue of Liberty when this went down because, <laughs> like. Right. Wolverine's using those adamantium claws to like take off like pieces of the crown and they're having these yeah. big battles and then that like the the thing blows up the torch. Blow up the torch. And <laughs> we sh I feel like we should have read about that somewhere. <laughs> sure. Maybe. Exactly. I always think about that some when we're watching some of these movies that look in, like they are actually real and going, "Ah, oh, I didn't I, I I should have read about those aliens that blew up the White House in Independence Day. I didn't <laughs> It never made the news here. Crazy. Um, yep. So uh, so they get there, and they, they, they stop this from happening. Um, uh, but also, I feel like that there was a, a weirdness about how he was giving his power to Rogue because it absolutely decimated the strongest of them, Wolverine, when she would touch him for a period of time. Magneto touches her Survived. and can control how that how that goes down so that was a little because mm -hmm. again a, a, according to the, his appearance in the holocaust not a young guy right yeah yeah so the um the whole thing with rogue is i think it's how long she has skin to skin contact with her person that she's touching or or, or um I don't want to say victim because she's not usually trying to do it, although she was evil at one point. But um, I think that for him, I, maybe he timed it out so much that he knew. I don't know. I don't know how he would have known how long to hold on to her. Um, but yeah. Well, you don't somehow... even know why he was looking for her specifically. Exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. All Somehow, right. so, if you go down the rabbit rabbit hole, they'll tell you that it's because somebody wrote in the newspaper about her putting her boyfriend into a coma, and then he found that, you know, but yeah, how, how else did he know? But it didn't say anything about her taking powers from mutants, because at that point, she never had, to our knowledge. Exactly. So. That's exactly All right. right. Along that same line, when Charles goes to use Cerebro, Mystique has snuck in and put some kind of like black ooze inside of yes. Cerebro. And it's not like this thing goes into his skin. He just puts it on his head and something about this throws him into a coma. Uh, how does how does Magneto have this kind of technology? Magneto helped him build it, he said. True. So he knows what maybe could clog up the machinery <laughs> or something. Yeah. Keep it from and we working do, correctly. And we do see that in first class. The, like him helping him to to build it along the way, so maybe so. Yeah, okay, all right, I'll I'll go with that. Plausible. Um, yeah, yeah, and I also love the the helmet, which they bring up a lot in the other movies. They kind of touch on it here, but that that's the whole thing that protects him from um, mm -hmm. from uh, from Charles like getting into his head is that he's got the helmet on to keep that from happening. Right. Right. Uh, which apparently Kevin Bacon created. If you if what? you believe everything in in, in <laughs> that you see in um, in X Men First Class, um, oh my goodness, yeah, right. <clears throat> anyway, uh, they save the day here. There's some weird thing where like like he throws Cyclops's visor to Jean, who knows to hold it at a certain angle, and right, <laughs> and and Scott opens his eyes, and the the beam turns into the thing and goes. Uh -huh. Physics, physics. Right. It's all yeah. physics. Angles and geometry. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll suspend disbelief on that one too, and then sure. and then it and then they kind of wrap it up with kind of a, a, a you know a, a nice bow where Rogue's gonna stay. She likes to play foosball and and she's and she <laughs> likes her new hair. And then they go to um, to you she's know, sweet on Ice Man. Right. Exactly. Uh, poor Bobby. Um, and then they're gonna yeah. go to. Um, 
Which, uh, by the way, I think they should have made him a bigger deal in general in the in the movies. They they use him a little bit in the other movies, but yeah. Right. Um. Anyway, so uh, so they 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 show Wolverine's going, and he's looking into like his past because Charles mm -hmm. has sent him down a path that maybe he might be able to figure out a little bit about where he came from. Um, and then we see the like a final epilogue with. Charles and uh, and and Eric playing chess in a glass room, which still seems a little sketchy. Uh, and now the, he finds a way out. <laughs> Spoiler alert in X two, um, yes. but it still seems a little sketchy the way that that it's all set up because like it's it's got some weird tube that comes out, but there's no metal involved. But Charles is able to like roll a, a roll wheelchair his, across wheelchair. it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <sighs> maybe telekinetically. I don't know. <laughs> It reminds me a lot of the room that they that they make for the Hulk in in Avengers that ends up being used for Loki. So, okay, yeah, I can see yeah, that. There you have it. Um, and then and yeah, again, nice little bow on it. There's not an after credit scene because we hadn't invented those yet, apparently, other than Ferris Bueller. Um, <laughs> right. You know, we hadn't invented the idea of doing it. Although, if you look at some of these later on, a lot of them have these very intricate ones that never pay off. Right. Mm -hmm. um, You're waiting so... for something to be followed up on in the later movie, and they never do. Right. Um, as far as in the parks, we don't have X-Men in the parks for uh, for Disney, but we have them for Universal. Have you been to Marvel Superhero Island? I assume you have. A hundred percent, yes. <laughs> uh, I, I wish that that existed in that format because it's, it's really more in, in up your alley kind of the cartoonish – vibes mm -hmm. of uh of the x-men rather than the uh the like the realistic version but oh yeah um, and the characters are all in their original costumes rogues in her green spandex with her big red and and white hair there and yeah it's great they come out on motorcycles or well or yeah little, and, and, you know parade yeah and it, and the music and everything is all pumped up and you know mm -hmm. it's like you've got spider-man and captain america but you've got wolverine and cyclops and rogue and storm out there too mm -hmm. um i have this <laughs> i have this very cheesy picture of my son with him with rogue and storm doing like this fighting pose that i thought That's was awesome. so funny that i put it on a mug and gave it to him for christmas oh. um yeah <laughs> Cause, but again, it's that's fun. Great. Like that's fun. Like Avengers Campus is cool. You've been to Avengers Campus, yeah. right? No, um, I haven't. I thought you had. No, we're we're gonna go this year. We're gonna go okay. in September. Mm -hmm. Avengers Cam Avengers Campus is cool, but uh, but there's something about going through Marvel Superhero Island that's just fun uh, to mm -hmm. me. Like the the rock type weird music blaring and and like mm -hmm. you said they come in on the motorcycles and they they do the, like attention the heroes are on their way and like it's like oh yeah they're <laughs> on their way the funniest thing to me though is that the fantastic four cafe in the guidebook says tell your hunger it's cl it's clobbering time it's clobbering time <laughs> yeah that's great <laughs> whoever wrote that i hope is an executive now at universal because that was great <laughs> um i don't know did you ever do the character meal there that is something I have yet to do, unfortunately. I, I have some friends that have done it, and they said that was fun, but I've never done it. The meal? Mm -hmm. But yeah. the experience is it, mm -hmm. is cool. Like, they have, like, a little red carpet, and then they would pull away, oh. like, the rope, and you would go in. And it's, mm -hmm. it's it's you know, it's counter service, like, Italian pizza, pasta, oh, that gosh. kind of a thing. But the characters spent quality time with us, and uh, it was, it was a, a neat experience. But... Um, yeah, I, it's just fun. I like Marvel Superhero Island. I wish they could find that kind of a of a vibe, but I do also like Avengers Campus and all the things that are happening around there. So that's kind of cool too. Um, so out of all of the movies that are that are in this series, there's you know again the first class ones kind of mesh in with mm -hmm. the uh, the um, the this original group in the X Men uh, Days of Future Past. Where they're trying right. to like the ones in the future are trying to save things by going back to the ones in the past, and and they use uh, Wolverine to go back in because you know he's the one that can do that and go back through the the two worlds, um, and then Deadpool comes along, and Deadpool was one of those things again that they launched out of X Men Wolverine, X Men Origins Wolverine, and it was kind of all wrong the way they put it together. Uh, and so then again, Ryan Reynolds makes fun of that in in the end of Deadpool two, and we've got Deadpool three coming up with Wolverine. What is the thing you would like to see happen in Deadpool three that would tie back into these X Men movies? 
Oh gosh. That's a great, well, I, I didn't you. like that they had, um, that they had Professor X pass away at the end. So oh. I would like to see, you know, his, uh, well, his, his consciousness, you know, lived on, but his, his physical body did not. So I'd like to see them bring him back in some way, probably. I don't know that they would do that though, because I mean, really it, it's about Deadpool. It's not about the X-Men. You know, I don't know how they would tie it back in. It's it's not, but I mean, they really are leaning into this whole <laughs> the love, <laughs> Wolverine the love thing. <laughs> so yeah, so best friends come together. Uh, July twenty sixth, uh, we'll be able to see it in theaters. I'm very excited to be able to see a Marvel movie. They're 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 slowing down how many they're putting out. They're it's it's mm -hmm. it's been you know, it's taken a little bit maybe longer, they, and we still don't. Maybe they have ahead. Deadpool join the X Men. <laughs> Like, well, and and up. we still don't know. I mean, we saw Professor X in uh, in the Multiverse of Madness. We saw, you know, That's which true. was great. It was so cool mm -hmm. to see that Patrick cool. Stewart as Professor X once again. And he mm -hmm. he seems ageless. Honestly, he seems like yeah. he could, you know, he could pull that off today again. Uh, and so you you have him in that movie. We're going to see Wolverine here, which, again, both of these will be MCU-ish. Um, but we don't know when they're coming up with X-Men. We know Fantastic Four. They've announced the cast for that. We know when that's coming out. But we don't have X-Men yet. So, um, so I'd really – can I just say if I put it out there, I would love to see – Rogue, because her storyline actually fits perfectly into Marvel with uh, the Avengers, because she takes Carol Danvers' powers. Now, I don't know that they will do that because they have so much writing on Captain Marvel and that whole franchise, but that is how she be becomes super strong. That's how she learn, you know, has the power to fly, because she's able to take, now she doesn't kill her, she puts her into a coma-like state, but she's able to absorb her powers and, and use those powers. So maybe that's how they merge the two to do franchises. Okay. I don't know. Well, I, again, I think they're going to probably have to reboot a lot of this, especially when they finally get to X-Men. Um, I don't mm -hmm. think that uh, Ian McKellen can step out as uh, as, as Magneto, Magneto. Magneto at that mm -hmm. point, so we'll see. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited to see more. So uh, I want to say thank you to everybody for watching. Before we get our final thoughts in here, so be thinking about them, uh, Stephanie, but uh, thank you guys okay. for watching so much. We appreciate you. We want to give a shout-out to our WIGS members, uh, the WDWNT Interglobe Society. We love our WIGS. Thank you guys so much for being part of that. Uh, if you want to know more about that, that's our Patreon program. You can go to patreon.com forward slash WDWNT. Uh, News Tonight is on break. We are going to be on break for Park Center uh, on uh, this coming Sunday because it's Easter. So happy Easter to all those who celebrate. Um, that is this Sunday, so we're going to be skipping. But if you want to, check out Stephanie. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I think it was Stephanie, Desi, and Allison, right? Shannon. Last week. Shannon, not Desi. <laughs> Sorry, Desi. Uh, Shannon, Stephanie, and Allison were on last week's Park Center. Go check it out if you haven't already. You can check it out at wdwnt.tv. Uh, and then we will be skipping this Sunday. We'll be back Wednesday with Muppets Most Wanted. We're going to be doing that one okay. uh, on Deep in the Plus next week. And then we'll be back the following April 7th with another edition of Park Center. So thank you guys so much for being with us on all this programming. Uh, we love hanging out, talking to you guys in the chat. Uh, and uh, so thank you guys for doing that. Now is the time, Stephanie, though. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the movie. We've <laughs> talked about the cast. We've talked about the franchise. We've talked about Marvel Superhero Island but uh, and the cartoon. <laughs> but what I need to know is the 2000 X-Men movie. Stephanie, mm -hmm. would you recommend this movie? Absolutely. Yes. Two thumbs up. You got to go see it. I don't know about like you're talking about. I don't know the order in which you see it. Maybe you watch X-Men First Class first and then you do Days of Future Past and then you do X-Men 2000. I don't know. I haven't done it in that order. Maybe it would make more sense, but I really definitely give it a two thumbs up. You got to go see it. Yeah. Um, and, and I think back to the first Deadpool movie when uh, – uh, when they're taking Deadpool in and he's like, we're going to take you to see Professor X. And he's like, oh, yeah, McAvoy or Stewart. Um, I love <laughs> that, that they make fun of that in that movie. Um, I would say that I would recommend this movie too because I think it, it stands the test of time. It's 24 years old. Like, again, that shocks me that it's been 24 years this June since this movie came out, and I do still think it stands up. And on top of that, uh, you know, uh, Hugh Jackman still looks amazing. 
So I think yes, that he's he going to be pulling off. 24 <laughs> years later, he's still going to be playing Wolverine uh, this summer and uh, in Deadpool 3. So, um, yeah, I would recommend this series. Honestly, uh, the only movie I wouldn't really recommend would be X-Men Origins uh, Wolverine. But you can go back in uh, to Deepen the Plus. We had uh, we did a review of that. So you can check that out, and we'll talk. We, we talk a lot of smack about that movie. Um, but, Stephanie, thank you so much for being with me. Uh, hopefully, uh, baseball movies, what the heck? Like, I feel like I Disney know. had, like, hundreds. We did Sandlot already, but Angels in the Outfield, not on there. Uh, rookie of the Year, not on there. The Rookie is right. on there. But I Yeah, think that, I've seen that. It's good. But I think Rookie of the Year would have been better. So maybe when they finally yeah. bring it on, maybe it'll be during playoffs, and maybe we'll, maybe. like— We'll be able to talk about it then, but I hope yeah. you come back. And we actually will have you coming back uh, to talk about uh, with Shannon and with Allison because we, we all got together and talked about this. You all want to talk about <laughs> the Cinderella with Brandy and Whitney Brandy Houston. Uh, we'll be talking about that in April, so you all stay tuned. Have a great week uh, and a great Easter. Thank you so much, Stephanie, and everybody in the chat, Thank and we'll you. see you guys next time. Thanks, everybody.